Big news from Everton. Miami-based partner 777 Partners uh, are close to agreeing a deal to take over the club. The multi-club investors have been in discussions with Farhad Mashiri since the news that New York Group, MSP Sports Capital, had ended its exclusivity agreement with the Everton majority shareholder. 777 already have a number of football clubs in their portfolio including Hertha Berlin, Sevilla and Standard Liège, with the fans of Liège holding a demonstration criticising the group's involvement at their last game. The move by 777 would be a full takeover once all the Premier League requirements are met, which could take several months to complete. <coughs> Well, what do we know about 77 Partners? Uh, they are a Miami-based multi-club investment firm. They were founded in 2015. As we said, their portfolio includes Sevilla, Standard Liège, Genoa as well, amongst other clubs across Europe. Standard Liège fans protested against their ownership earlier this month after the team missed out on European football last season and started this campaign with a six-game winless run. Mm. Well, let's get more on this American investment close to taking over at Everton. And we can speak to football finance expert Kieran Maguire. There he is. Uh, very good morning to you. Uh, first up, is this good news for Everton? If it brings stability to Everton, and I think there have been uh, a number of issues with regards to the funding of the club, uh, Farhad Mashiri has probably put in around about £700 million and hasn't had a return either on or off the pitch. Um, we've got now outstanding issues with regards to the continued funding of the stadium. If 777 can bring that, then I think that could be seen as a positive step, trying to work out their motives, because this is by would be by far their, their biggest investment in football. I, I think that's a broader issue. They've not been successful historically, and they do specialise in, in buying clubs who tend to be in a, in a form of financial distress. Yeah, but there has been some serious accusations against people involved in the American company in the past. How much will that worry the Premier League? Well, the Premier League have uh, very, very well laid out owners and directors tests. And what they'll be looking for is, are there any unspent convictions, um, i.e. That, that, have, that have not fully, fully been concluded? Um, one of the owners has had a historic conven uh, conviction with regards to uh, drugs, uh, cocaine, cocaine trafficking. But I think this was around about 20 years ago. So in theory, that's that's spent. So that that should be dealt with. I think the other issue, as far as the Premier League is concerned, it will be looking for two things. First of all, can 777 demonstrate that they have the money? And can they also prove where that money has come from for a relatively a new organisation. It's got around about $12 billion worth of assets, so it can certainly afford to buy Everton. But I think the Premier League will be trying to, to pull back the curtain to see where the funding has come from, because it's not made money historically from the football clubs under its control. So what is the business plan here? Why do they want Everton? Well, if you listen to uh, Josh Wander, who is uh, one of the, the leading people at 777, they believe that football doesn't organise itself very well. It doesn't market itself. He, he says, you know, we should be buying insurance. We should be buying our cars through our football club because you've got that degree of loyalty. So trying to uh, to, to tighten up the relationship, trying, trying to terrible ter wood, trying to monetize the fans, you know, instead of just buying merchandise and season tickets, can we use the football club brand as a means of, you know, Everton is a huge club. It's got a huge fan base. Can that be used to uh, generate more money? Uh, things such as the, the broadcast rights, we've got a new stadium. Can, can we turn that into a 365-day-a-year stadium in terms of generating revenue? I think that will be their focus. Um, and, and I think you know, perhaps some of the, the, the traditional fans will be saying, well, hold on, you know, those aren't necessarily the values with, with which we hold Everton so high. You know, we, we don't see it as a money-making vehicle. It, it's, it's an important part of our lives and, and represents the city and, and where we come from. So, so what I'm hearing, Kieran, I don't want to put words in your mouth, it seems almost like it could be out the frying pan into the fire because some fans are concerned about the new owners and what they've done with Standard Liège and... Melbourne victory as well. So have they got reason to be worried? Well, what you've got to ask yourself, 
are 777 partners Evertonians? No, they're not. They they are they are in it from a business perspective, and, and therefore for any business investment, you're looking for a return on your investment. Now, if if they bring in improved standards with regards to player recruitment, and that's reflected on the pitch, then they could buy the club, and they'll be looking to probably to sell it, to flip it in effect in a few years' time at a profit with Everton as an established club in the top half of the Premier League. And under those circumstances, it would be worth a lot more money. But clearly, they've got to prove themselves with regards to that. And if you take a look at the portfolio of other clubs that they own, they've not demonstrated that they can they can turn you know, what is big talk into actual results on the pitch because you know that's that's a magic potion which which nobody seems to have. You know, it, it comes through an awful lot of hard work and uh, a huge amount of investment in terms of people and, and systems. Yeah. Will they, will they look down the road to Manchester United and see how the Glazers have, have leveraged to borrow money from the club? Is, is there a fear 777? Will it, do they operate in the same way? Is this a different model here? No, they, they tend to be more of a private fund rather than using a leverage buyout style that we've seen at Manchester United. But given that they have $12 billion worth of assets, there will be a combination of both borrowing um, and equity. But as far as borrowing money is concerned, you know, they should be able to borrow at relatively cheap rates given the size of the company. Um, and that's not necessarily been the case that, that Farhad Mashiri's experience recently with regards to the loans from Rights and Media Funding Limited and MSP. I've been looking through their seven core values, which is kind of neat and, and sort of business speak when, when you've got 777 as your name. And, and, and most of the things written are it's kind of business speak as well, uh, which frankly bores me. But the, the, the bit at the end goes, uh, we are willing to get our hands dirty in the process. What on earth does that mean? And, and should we be worried? I don't think they're expected to pick up a shovel and go and help build the stadium, are they? So, so what do they mean there? Well, I think what they're saying there is that they're not necessarily interested in taking over other clubs which have been successful and therefore come at a premium price. The chances are that because of some of the financial challenges that are in front of Everton, they'll be looking to buy the club at a discount price. They'll be looking to change things as far as the way that the club is run um, with, with a view to having a turnaround and being successful as a football club. And in turn, that, of course, will generate additional income and profits from their point of view. I guess if you're an Evertonian, all you want to know is, does this mean Sean Dyche will have lots of money to spend going forward? I think that's as much determined by financial fair play challenges as, as they are from the money available. Um, 777, in theory, can, can go to their partners and, and get, get additional cash. But being able to spend it, I think, is Everton's biggest challenge, that they have been moving costs off the payroll. Some players have, have ended their contracts. Some players have been sold. But if you take a look at Everton over the course of the last three years, they've, at, they've at averaged 90% of their revenue has gone out in the form of wages, which means that they are under a lot of challenges when it comes to compliance with FFP. Is, is the Premier League still attractive then? Especially, I guess, what's going on in Saudi Arabia now. It used to be the big hitters on planet football. But is, is that moving? Is that changing now? No, the Premier League is still the place to be because for all of the attractiveness of the Saudi Pro League, it's attractive to players because of the wages that they can earn. But if you take a look at the finances of the club, I mean, the average attendance, I think, last weekend in the Saudi Pro League was around about six and a half thousand. So, so that's not comparable to the Premier League. Um, the, the wages mean that the clubs are all losing money from 777's perspective and that's of other American investors. They still believe that the Premier League is vastly undervalued and that there are huge opportunities to monetize fans, to generate more money from alternative sources in terms of broadcasting, AI, virtual reality and so on. And if they can turn those uh, those opportunities into genuine cash, then there's a huge amount of money to be made. I don't think that's the same in Saudi. Um, what we do know is the fans have protested against Mashiri over the years. If this was to, to be him selling the club now and, and, and be gone, how will he be remembered? And um, just re reiterate that figure that he's invested in the club. 
Well, well, based on the numbers that I've been looking at, I think we're probably not very short of 700 million pounds in the form of loans, in forms of, of equity. He has underwritten huge losses at the club. Um, I, I think he's he came in with good intentions. He he wanted Everton to be successful, and he and he gave a, a succession of uh, senior executives and, and managers the opportunity to spend money. I think you've you've got to query just how well that money is being spent. Um, it, it's it's very much a sort of a qualitative challenge that Everton have had rather than a quantitative one. He's he has put the money in. I don't think it's been particularly well managed um, after he's done his part of the agreement. Yeah. OK, always fascinating to speak to you, Kieran. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.